Man, all right. Um, yeah, thank you all. Um, I know there's a lot of you guys put in long Sundays <laughs> serving, and uh, and I just really there's a lot of things that you guys could be doing other than here, and I'm glad that you guys make choices to come here <laughs> and uh, be in fellowship. And so um, I've been reading through the Gospels lately, and I, I wanted to just share some thoughts that I had about, um, um, like, well, I guess I'll just share them, and then you'll, you'll get the thoughts that I want to share. But um, I'm looking, I was looking at some verses on Mark. I'm on Luke right now, uh, but I was reading through some, the first chapter of Mark, and I don't have the verses here, but you guys can study this. And I was just thinking about kind of the inauguration of Jesus's, of Jesus's um, ministry. And it's really, it's really easy. I don't know if you guys ever do this, but it's really easy to say, well, it was Jesus. You know, he's God, you know. Of course he had it together. But it's really important to know, we're going to see a verse here later, that he, he humbled himself and was, he was fully human. And he really had, he struggled like we do. I, it's really easy to forget that or maybe not even comprehend really what Jesus did and the model that he has laid out for me or for all of us. But as I was reading, um, again, Mark 1 is really powerful as the inauguration of his ministry. Just think of these events and remember that Jesus had... Jesus had to go to the Father, okay, like, like we have to. He was fully God, but he was fully human, okay? So in one chapter here, his friend, his ministry supporter, John the Baptizer, was put in prison. And so he, he was, in a sense, inaugurated into ministry in a, in a situation where his one main, you know, big supporter was thrown into prison. There's a lot of spiritual weight there, and there's some mourning that goes on. He, that was hard for him, I guarantee you. Um, and, then, and then Jesus was out recruiting disciples, okay? And he's, it, just think about the scenarios here. Don't think the devil was not majorly at work. I mean, he comes to a guy, he comes to a boat, right? And these guys are, you know, maybe multi-generation fishermen, right? And he comes up to these guys and says, hey, come follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. And, and their dad's probably like, what? <laughs> and their grandpa's probably like, what? What are you talking about? You know? And they left their nets and they followed him. You know? And he, and he recruited them and he was working. And then he was, and then he was teaching. He was teaching in the, in the synagogue, and, and like Jack was, I really could relate to what Jack was sharing today. He said, do you know how hard it is up here? I'm not saying that like it's hard, like, oh, you guys, oh, Brian, it's really hard for you. But I could so relate to what he was sharing today. He said, you know why it's so hard? Because it's so convicting. You've got to humble yourself under God's hand, and he, he just, it's the most humbling thing just to get before God and say, God, I, I just don't have it to share with these guys, you know? And have my life together enough, and God just, uh, you know. So there is, and there is a, a an energy that comes out. So just think of Jesus here. He was, you know, losing friends. He's recruiting disciples. He's teaching as he's teaching here in the beginning of Mark. You know, somebody who was demon possessed. So G Jesus cast out the demons, which is really, really cool, right? It was really cool. And that is really awesome, and he's really powerful, but I also want you to know that he was also fully human. And this was really, really, really tapping on him. This was draining him physically. There was a ton on him. And so while it was really cool, he, he, Jesus had a workload. So he finishes up there, you know, all in day's work. You know, he's recruiting some disciples. He's pouring his life out, teaching. The evil one shows up, and he's casting out demons during his teaching. And he goes home, and finally he can kick his shoes back, and he goes to Simon's mother-in-law. 
and he's got to work more. He's got to heal there, which is it's really cool that he can do it, but there's work. His work is not done. And then we see all that after, after dark. After it was dark out. It's a pretty long day. Can you sense? After it was dark out, people came to him. And they came. They knock, 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 knock. You know, teach me, teach me, teach me. Heal me, heal me, heal me. Cast out, cast out, teach. Cast out, heal. Do you guys ever... Do you, some of you guys that are really engaged in ministry, and many of you guys are, do you ever feel you're just pressed upon? Jesus was pressed upon. Some of you have got to feel that, that you're pressed upon, that the weight of ministry just presses upon you. If we could hit the next slide here. I do, I want to back up. I, I do want to think of the humanity of Jesus, the humanity of a Godfather follower too. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. Look at this last phrase, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. You see, Jesus became a servant. He laid his godness. I understand all this, you guys. I don't get all this. This is pretty tough stuff to sign, but I do. He, he, he was still God, but he put it, he didn't use that. He didn't use that part of it. He still had to exert. He still had to love, and he still got tired, and, and, and they pressed upon him. So we look, what did Jesus do? What did he do? Read that. Read that, Mark. You be, you be, if you really, that, that's been what's been overwhelming me as I look at the life of Jesus. Just the sheer manliness, just the sheer perseverance, the sheer get after it that he had was just, it was just unbelievable. And he was still fully man and fully suffered. So the question is, what did Jesus do as a human to comfort himself? What did he do to strengthen himself? I want to look at this next slide here. And this is, I really think, this is a lot of places that we go. This is just a partial list. Jesus was physically tapped for right season, for right reasons. Many times we are physically tapped. They could be for right reasons, could be for wrong reasons, but we get physically just drained. And sometimes we're just spiritually drained. We're in the battle. And, and we need comfort. And here are some of the things that, these are illegitimate comforts. Now listen, this is really important that you understand that. A lot of these are not illegitimate themselves. They're illegitimate only as we use these things, okay? Only as we use these things as a source of comfort that replace our God. Okay, it's really important that you, that you understand that food, I put mine right at the top of the list, um, I, I get discouraged and, and I can just, well, you know, there's comfort in that, right? And th there's comfort that. Um, buying, there's comfort in that. It doesn't matter how much you're spending, there's, there can be comfort, there's a pseudo comfort in buying and acquiring Home projects, you get a little older, some people, boy, their, their lawns are so well manicured. That, that is that bad? No. But it is when it replaces our father as a comforter, and I really believe that oftentimes it does. Television, um, gaming, sports. Um, you're all invited to come over after if you want to watch the Bears game. I don't like the Bears at all. And I bring people over a lot to fellowship. And, and 
That's good. There, there's a, that, that's great. We come together in fellowship. I had people over for Monday night. I love it. I had people over today. I was working on my study most of the time. I don't catch usually all of it. But would you not agree that it is an easy thing for sports to become our source of comfort when we're discouraged? That we can just, it's something that we can just tune out on and not tune in to God? Pretty easy. How about, maybe this won't affect some of you, but I, I see this a lot in the world that I live in careers and even successful careers. Um, you gain some measure of success um, and it can just be a real escape. You might be failing any pl every place else in life, <laughs> but you go to work and you're succeeding, you know, uh, and it can become an escape. Of course, alcohol and drugs. An increasing number of pastors, statistically, are, are drinking. An increasing number of pastors and pastors and church leaders, an increasing number of Christians, pastors, church leaders, and Christians, Christian males, are looking at inappropriate things on the internet. That has become a major epidemic. And it is, it's instant gratification. It's instant, oh, this kind of feels good. And then it, it is just, it's just horrible. It's, you know, anybody that's succumbed knows it, it's horrible for your soul, okay? Um, pornography. Um, I think I'd, I was talking about, um, here, here's another one, just, and you guys just fill in the blanks. What, how do you comfort yourself? How do you comfort yourself with the pains, with the pains of this world? How do you do it? Just fill in the blanks. I can identify mine, mine up there, my two, three up there. Um, you could, it could be hobbies. Is hobbies a bad thing? No. But when you are absorbed in that and that becomes your all in all, um, here's another one, dreams. Oh, that's a good thing. Well, I got a dream to do this. When your dream replaces God, it becomes a bad thing. See how subtle, how subtle this is? A dream, I got a dream, it's really, really positive. But it's suddenly, and it's really, really good, but it suddenly becomes an idol because my dream has replaced my relationship with my father. Okay? So it's all very subtle. So now as we think of Jesus, and I think of his flurry of activity, and Jesus being fully human, what did he do? If we can go to the next slide. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, this was after an incredible barrage of spiritually draining activity. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. That, that, that's, what he, that's what Jesus did. It's really, really very simple. But he went to the Father. He went to the Father. So the question that we need to ask ourselves in, in all, are we be, are, is the Father, is Jesus, is God himself our source of comfort and our source of relief and our source of refuge. We need to go to the Father. I find it interesting in verse 36, look at this. Simon and his companions went to look for him. I mean, here the brother. <laughs> Jesus, you know, pretty full day, incredibly full day. And then what they're doing, they're pressing on him again. They're pressing on him. They're pressing on him. Heal, teach, heal, help, serve. Verse 37. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Think about that. They're on me. <laughs> Everyone is looking for you. I love verse 38. Here you see a spiritually 
connected person to the Father, to the Heavenly Father, that says this. Jesus replies, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. Fire in his soul. Wrought in his time alone with God. Very early in the morning where he sought God and he recharged his soul. He met his need, his human need for comfort from the Father. And he was recharged. So I can go in there and preach there also. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. That's what we do. We, we, we go. We go to God. We go to God. I... Uh, okay, so this is what I think. I think part of um, what I'm called to do as a pastor is to, if you read like 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, it says there's a number of things that like spiritual leaders would do. One thing is a, a spiritual leader would be called to encourage somebody like a mother, that, you know, where you comfort and encourage them. You can read this in 1 Thessalonians 2. It also says in 1 Thessalonians 2, that you're also to, in, to exhort like a father. <laughs> okay, you know, saying, come on, hey, you know, come on, come on, come on, get going, you know. And uh, so I would exhort as a father that I, I do believe that, that creature comforts that we are imbalanced, okay, that we are, we as a whole, and as a body, and I think corporately, and I, I also think Christians, as I, I look, I think that's typically what we do. We, 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 we create our own comforts. You know, we, we seek our own comforts, okay? doesn't mean we always all do that. And I'm not saying everybody does that, okay? But I think it's a problem. So as a father, I'm just encouraging you to really identify how do you comfort yourself? How do you comfort yourself? And do you comfort yourself in God? And we see the effects of what Jesus did when he had comforted himself with his Father and how, how powerful, how powerful that is. Um, okay, so I have, um, in closing here, um, I have an exhortation for us. I think this would be something that would help us um, because we can just, you know, go through the motions, you know, and just, you know, and just, we're just, here I go, I'm in, my, I'm in my cubicle, I'm working, I'm going and going to Bible, so just doing the, you know, we're not thinking, you know, we're not like, okay, where am I really at? You know, where am I really at? How desperate for God am I really? How hungry am I? Is there fire in my eyes? Do people want to get saved because they look at me? They say, wow, there's something different about that guy, or is the wow factor gone? I know in my life, I think the wow factor has is, is been some water sprayed on it, you know, on the fire, okay? And so, and I think I've, I've, I need to go back to God a lot, go straight to the source, you know, in a lot stronger way. This is what I'm encouraging us to do. Um, for those of you that would like to participate and are able to participate, um, just call a fast for tomorrow. Um, and um, the purpose of the fast would be um, just to, to connect with our Father and to ask God to help, help us to, re to understand where, where we are going to other comforts other than him, other than the God of all comfort. Okay, so our text here says when you fast. Okay, so it's implied that you do fast. Do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. In other words, don't do it for the external. Don't do it because, oh, wow, you know, I'm gonna, you know somebody told me to fast. I'm doing you know, a fast. You know, I'm going to be like really spiritual or whatever. No, we want to we wanna see God. We want to have God. We want to, it, it, it's like a, um, kind of like a tire alignment, you know, where, uh, 
you know, where we, or it, it, it's a, a help us to wake up. It's not like it's not the end to anything. It's a start of rejuvenating our relationship with fa our Father, okay? So um, the point is not that we just starve ourselves, okay? I, for one, being such a lover of food, I have a hard time, <laughs> really hard time fasting. I really do. Um, some of you guys can, it's much easier for you. Um, here's an example. You don't, you, just to be real practical here, you, you wouldn't, let's say, for instance, some people might not have some, may have some health concerns that they, they would have to do like a modified fast, or if you're pregnant, I don't know what, never been pregnant, I don't know the rules for all that, but, but that the issue is not the legalistic aspect of, um, you know, not eating. The, 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 idea is is that we are not eating so we can focus and God can show us our need and when you're hungry you're gonna be like oh what is my how do I want to get comforted <laughs> it, it can help to reveal your flesh okay and then also just to draw us to God you know and it just even frees up the time to draw us to draw us to God and um, so if you guys would join me in that, I, I think that would be really good. Uh, it says, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you're fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So the goal of this fast is very specifically that we would all collectively in an increasing measure, look to God as our all in all and that he would be our source, that he would be our source of encouragement, okay? So why don't we pray, okay? Lord Jesus, I thank you for your tremendous um, love. God, I thank you that you, God, what you did there, what Philippians describes, God, God, the account of you 